In this video, we will show you how to set the Y axis wheels on your smart bench. This should be done after 320 hours of operational use, after transport or storage, if you've experienced accuracy issues, if you've replaced your lower beam for warranty or upgrade, if you've replaced your old wheels. This video is in support of our wheel setting knowledge base article found on our website. To set your Y axis wheels, you will need a T25 Torx driver, a wheel adjustment spanner, a 4mm hex driver, a 10mm spanner. An easy way to check if your Y axis needs attention is to check for excessive movement. When your wheels are set correctly, there should be little to no movement with these checks. With Smartbench powered on, place one hand on the X lower beam and hold one finger against wheel set one in the channel. Rock the beam back and forth. If the wheels are set correctly, there should be very little movement. As you can see, these wheels will need setting. One check you need to do is to make sure that your lower X beam is square to your Y bench. To do this, you will first need to turn Smart Bench off and remove your Z head and upper beam. You will then need to remove the home end legs and use them to prop up your Y bench. Place your hand on the centre of the lower X beam and pull it towards you to align the Y bench and lower X beam. The left and right wheel plates should both sit flush with the Y end plate. If the left and right plates do not match, then you will need to adjust your wheels. If both plates match, then your machine is square, however you may still need to adjust your wheels. The Y axis wheels are fitted with an eccentric bearing adjuster, which allows us to make micro adjustments to the wheel positions. We will now be setting each of our wheels to their initial wheel positions, ready for adjustment. Ensure that your lower X beam home sticker is facing you, as we will be referencing a clock face as we work. You will first need to set your wheels to their initial wheel positions, as shown in this diagram. The left and right wheels should be set as complete opposites to maintain squareness. For example, the left wheel and wheel set 1 is orientated to a 6 o'clock position, whereas the right is facing 12 o'clock. On your wheels you can see a crescent of the inner race which is exposed, and it is the centre of this crescent which we are referencing. Use the wheel adjustment spanner to adjust the positions of the bearing adjusters, and then use a T25 Torx driver to secure them in their new positions. Before preloading the wheels, make sure the motor pinions are not engaged with the racks. To do this, loosen the two bolts on each motor using a 4mm hex driver and a 10mm spanner. Then rotate the motors to their lowest position. Insert wheel set 1 into the channels of the Y bench to test the fit. You are looking for a light pop as the wheels go in. In this case, the wheels are giving little resistance so we will need to increase the preload. To increase the preload, rotate your bearing adjusters anti-clockwise slightly. Ensure you are making the same adjustments for both sides. Once again, offer up your lower X beam to the channels. Now they are engaging nicely, we can move on to wheel set 3. For wheel set 3 adjustments, you can leave the X beam engaged with the Y bench for ease. Carefully position your X beam so that wheel sets 1 and 2 sit in the channels, leaving wheel sets 3 and 4 exposed. Then check and see how wheel set 3 engages into the channels. Once again, our wheels are not giving enough resistance as they enter the channels, which means we need to add preload. Another indicator that there is not enough preload is if you are able to rotate the wheels with your finger whilst they are in the channels. Pull the beam towards you slightly so wheel set 3 is exposed for you to make adjustments. Once again, we will be adding preload by rotating the bearing adjusters anti-clockwise. As you can see, these wheels are now set. Before moving on to wheel set 2, we need to once again check the squareness of the lower X-beam to the Y bench. Now we can see that the right X-beam plate is protruding slightly further than the left. This means that we need to reduce preload on the right wheel and increase preload on the left wheel. Make minor adjustments till both plates sit flush with the Y bench. Now we can move on to wheel set 2. Offer wheel set 2 up to the Y bench channels. In this case, our wheels are too tight and will not easily engage with the channels. A good way to tell if your wheels are too tight is if you are unable to push the X-beam forward using just your thumbs. 
Decrease the preload by making clockwise adjustments to both wheels until you are happy with their engagement. Now that we've set wheel set 2, we need to check the approach. The approach is how well the X-beam maintains squareness while engaging in the Y channels. To check this, insert your X-beam up until the third wheel set, leaving half of the wheels out of the channels. The Y bench should line up with the centre of the bolt heads on both sides. If this is uneven, you will need to adjust the preload of wheel set 2. In this case, the right wheel sits further out of the channel than the left, so we need to reduce the preload of wheel set 2 on the right and increase preload on the left. Make minor and opposite adjustments until wheel set 3 is aligned evenly. Once you're happy with the approach, you can once again check the squareness. Now we can move on to wheel set 4. Push your X-beam into the Y channels and see how your wheels engage. As you can see, these wheels are not engaging at all and require more preload. Adjust your wheels until they engage securely into the channels. Then when you're happy, complete a final squareness check. Once you are satisfied that you have correctly set your wheels, you can now reattach your home legs and adjust the Y-axis motors. Lift the motor up so that it engages with the Y-racks. Tighten the bolts using your 10mm spanner and your T25 Torx driver. Your wheels and motors should now be set. To ensure accuracy and squareness, click the video to see how to calibrate Smartbench in the X and Y axis.